Today I will be reviewing the new Pinch of Nom budget book which is going to be released on 22nd June 2023. I will leave a link below. I'll be trying some recipes from the book telling you what I liked and what I think is missing. I've never heard of the authors Kate and Kay before but after a little digging I found they have over 1.2 million followers on Instagram. They have their own website and already have five Pinch of Nom recipe books released. So this Pinch of Nom budget book is their sixth recipe book and it's centered around keeping costs low. They've started that off by changing this particular book from hardback to paperback, which is cheaper in production and therefore they can offer this book at a cheaper price for the customers than their previous books, which is nice for a change because everything is becoming more expensive. So it's nice that something is actually less in price for once. I love the cover of the book, it's bright and inviting, the pages are good quality and I like if there's any mess while cooking should easily wipe off the book pages. This book has 75 recipes with 55 mains and 20 dessert recipes. 50 of these recipes are brand new so you won't find them online or in their previous books and 25 recipes you can find on the Pinch of Nom website. Out of the 55 main dishes you will find 38 are meat, 16 are vegetarian, 13 are vegan, 46 are gluten free and 31 are dairy free. And out of the 20 dessert recipes, recipes you will find, luckily no shepherd pie trifle in here, so all 20 are vegetarian, one, ve one vegan, seven gluten free and six dairy free. Something for everyone, which is great and it's all clearly labeled for each recipe. Other useful labels near each recipe are freeze me and batch friendly. Rich is also mentioned in the book how cooking more and freezing is a great way to use up ingredients because can eat it on another day, saving time and money. Each of the recipes are really simple to make and you don't need any fancy equipment to cook it like an air fryer or a slow cooker. On the recipes which you can use those, they do tell you the non-equipment cooking recipe as well as the equipment cooking version. At the back of the book you'll find a clear calorie count for each recipe along with helpful nutritional information to make planning and tracking food nice and simple. And I like how it's all in one chart, so easy to compare between the recipes. Flicking through the recipes, if you are a regular cook, a lot of them you might think, hmm, you already know how to cook this. But I did like seeing well-known recipes using different ingredients in line with keeping cost low, making me want to try a recipe by learning a new style of cooking, something I usually make. I find with recipe books, you don't have to follow them to the list. It's great to use them for meal inspiration and ideas to make your own dinner time exciting to suit the flavours and ingredients you might already have at home. You can do a few tweaks to a recipe and make it your own. However, if you're a beginner, then this is a great book because beginning of the book, all information regarding food, storage and kitchen utensils are clearly explained and I found easy explained recipe instructions any level will be able to follow. It's nice flicking through on days when you have no idea what to cook and need some inspiration or I found it was nice to hand to a family member and just be like pick a recipe for dinner instead of when we usually ask what do you want to eat for dinner and hear the response of I don't know anything mm, something nice. A lot of the recipes are slimming friendly so using low fat ingredients or sweeteners you can always tweak those recipes to suit yourself if you're not fussed about calories. Looking through the recipes the one that caught my eye was the chicken fajita pasta. I actually had all the ingredients to make this dish at home and it was really really delicious and my whole family enjoyed it, even the fussy toddlers. Instead of adding 400 grams of pasta, what I actually did was use half the amount, so 200 grams, and I put half the chicken fajita mix to the side to make chicken fajita wraps the next day. Another recipe which looked good was the caramelised onion tart, but seeing this little paragraph gave me an idea to use a few spoons of the chicken fajita mix instead of the caramelised onions to make chicken fajita tarts. And I can confirm these were just wow. So with one pan of chicken fajita, I actually ended up making three different meals and two were not actual recipes from the book. So using the book for ideas, you can actually end up making way more than 75 printed recipes. For the dessert, I picked a classic which you can't go wrong and most of us have been baking ingredients at home. My little girl enjoyed looking at the book and pretending to follow the recipe, even though she can't read. She's full. Mom, I have the way it's broken. With a little help with measuring, whisking and baking, she made a delicious cake. The recipe in the book has fewer calories because stated to use some sweetener instead of sugar but it was very easy to convert between sweetener to sugar as it's mentioned it's gram for gram. I like how all the recipes are not overly wordy and have short precise instructions. I do look forward to trying some of the other recipes too, especially the chicken nachos and all the desserts look really good. Few things I would have liked to see is more variety of recipes. 
especially as it's June in the UK currently and it's very very hot here. A lot of the recipes are bakes and pies. I don't really feel like making those types of recipes at the moment, but winter time, bring it on. As the whole theme of the book is about budget and keeping costs low, it would have been nice to see a little pricing of each recipe. Now I understand it will be difficult to calculate the exact cost, like how would you calculate this cost of a teaspoon of spice? So they could have maybe leave the spices out and maybe calculated the cost of the main ingredients from supermarket brand prices. More of a rough guide, I think. That would have been useful and fitted in with the theme of budget cooking. Overall, I think this book is great as a gift for beginners, especially with all the information about different ingredients, kitchen tools. I think non-beginners will also like this book, like myself, for recipe ideas and inspirations to make meal times exciting. Let me know in the comments on your thoughts about this cookbook. Thanks for watching.